Once again, welcome to Yoga with Designs for Zen. This is Rift Wing Designs, and I'm here to guide you on your yoga journey today. Again, if you've got some of your aids, I'll show you these two. These are different kinds of balls. <laughs> I should have done that first. Here we go. Ready? We've got like a peanut that's two tennis balls wrapped up in a tube sock, a hard ball, and this is like a massage one. It's got spikies. So I've got all of those. And if you have a paper towel roll, you can use that. If you've got a block, we've got blocks. This is a foam roller. If you don't have this, a uh, paper towel roll would actually work well. All right, so today we're gonna be doing massages because you know what? I felt so sore the last couple mornings. I don't know if it's the weather or the way that I'm sleeping or maybe just getting old, but whatever it is, I decided, you know what? Let's take everything that we've done together and make it into a combination aid yoga that allows us to use everything we've learned from our foam roller to our balls, blocks, and of course, the strap that we always have on Shinzo. Getting ready, so it's perfect. Get started, just find a comfy seat. Now, this is where we start having fun. You can sit on the block. You can sit on the foam roller, or if you have one or two balls, you can stick them underneath your sit bone and just kind of rub it around a little. So find out what you would like to sit on. Keep your balance. And I'm gonna put my feet out like this because it feels whoo, good to roll back and forth, just like this. And just come to stillness and then notice your breath. Notice how it feels just to sit here and whatever's comfortable for you. Notice your posture, your shoulders up and tight, or are they a little relaxed? Maybe flutter your eyes closed. Noticing the feel of the air against your skin and the temperature of your breath as it exits and enters. As we get started here, start to deepen your breath. Maybe I'm putting your hand on your belly. And we're gonna do some ujjayi breath a little bit to warm up to start with. So our muscles are warm. If this works for you, feel free. If it does not feel good, again, you don't have to because this is Designs for Zen Yoga. We follow Bob Ross style, which is do anything that feels good, but no pain. And if you make any kind of things that are not perfect, that's okay as long as you have fun. So, ujjayi breath. You inhale through your nose, and on the exhale, it's like you're breathing into fog a mirror, like <sighs> except you don't make the noise with the front of your mouth, you make it with your throat. So it's like, <sighs> like you just <sighs> So inhale, and then <sighs> I'm gonna make the sound of the ocean as it's going up through your throat and your nasal passages. And you can do this with the exhale with your mouth open. Inhaling nose, exhaling mouth. Or you can keep it in your nose. So if you keep it only in your nose, that builds heat faster. And if you exhale with your mouth, that's a little cooler. But you want to go at your own pace. You don't want to go too fast. This is not a breath <laughs> race. But every time, every time you exhale, just imagine that sounds of the ocean, that sounds of energy. Because one of the things here is, while it's my hero yoga today, even heroes need rest and rejuvenation. So after you've built up all that energy and heat and strength, you still need to find ways to stretch those muscles, relax them, and find stillness so that you're ready for the next thing to come. Three more breaths. And last one. And then wherever you are, we're gonna set our intention. Maybe again, adjusting if you had the ball on one side, switch it to the other. Think about what you would like to focus on today. So for me, obviously, it will be release. 
letting go of tension, releasing any built up frustration or energy. Pick what you need today, whether you'd like to dedicate your practice to yourself, to an idea or to someone else. And set that now. And as always, we're gonna seal it, so make sure you've got some good balance. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands to center. Inhale. And big exhale. And seal that intention in. Welcome to your massage yoga class. So here we are, we're sitting on whatever is comfortable for us. Again, notice how it feels. We're gonna do some twists here. So if you need your feet out or if you need them forward, however you need, I'm just gonna keep it with my hips down because that actually feels really good opening my hips. We're gonna inhale, arms up, twisting one way. And if you wanna go back and forth here, feel free, but because we have a balance underneath our sit bones, we're just gonna stay here. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist. For two, one, and inhale up, other side. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist. Two, one, and back up. Then hands are gonna come down in front of us. Just roll our shoulders a couple times. And then we're gonna take our arms out, give ourselves a big hug, and maybe even just rotate your spine a little bit as you do that. Give yourself some love, you deserve love. Noticing also maybe if you're shifting your weight on whatever you're sitting on, making sure that's comfortable. And come to stillness, maybe do a little bit of a fold here. Then inhale back up, maybe coming into a mini back bend, stretching up. Again, noticing your arms can go wherever it's comfortable for you. And then we're gonna take our arms back out front. We're gonna do some wrist stretches. So first rolling your wrists. And a lot of us sit at the computer a lot, so let's do just a little bit here. Again, we've got full videos on YouTube for chair yoga, different ways that you can stretch out. So check me out there if you haven't already. And now that you've twisted your wrist both ways, let's interlace our fingers, flipping your hands. I'm just gonna go up because I like my shoulders, get stretched, but we'll do more shoulders, don't you worry. Get a nice stretch, pull those shoulder blades down and back. You want them down, you don't want them scrunching up your ears. They already look like they're too close wearing this anyways. And then we're gonna let them go again. And then I like to do like, this is a, <laughs> I call it the woobly wave. I don't know what it actually is, but you do one elbow and the other and then switch sides. So now we're loosening up our shoulders and our wrists and our hands. And then let go, do anything else you need to here. The next thing we're gonna do is, again, if you have a ball handy, we're gonna be doing our neck. So uh, if you don't, you can just use your hands. So the first thing I'm gonna take off my wonderful stretchy scarf. Now for the ball, again, based off of what we've done before, you're just gonna take it and roll it with the palm of your hand on your neck. And turn your head, remember like we do with the, the string at the end of your nose, turning your head and finding an area where your neck is tight and then just rolling gently into it. You don't want any pain here, no sharpness or tingling, anything electrical. Just, if there's some pressure and some discomfort, that's what we're looking for here and we're using the palm of our hand rolling against it, breathing into it. If you have a partner with you, maybe you guys can do back rubs with each other. Doesn't matter. So go over the neck and the shoulder blade, the SCM here, the top of the shoulder. Just working it here again, moving your head, turning it different directions to see how different that feels. Like legit, I could do this all day, but we only have 50 minutes. So if you're ready, you can switch to the other side. And notice like you can use either hand. If it feels better to pull or it feels better to push, it doesn't matter which hand you use, it matters how it feels. Mm. Right? 
just felt like this was perfect on the menu today. Really need that. Breathing, maybe coming back to that Ujjayi breath. If you want to warm up even more. Ooh, have it right behind my ear. Oh my goodness. And one of the interesting things about yoga is you do explore your body. You take the time to slow down and listen and feel. And that's what makes it so magical. Because you have taken time right now not only to treat yourself to a workout, but to just slow down, to listen, to find that peace. Ooh, I really want to just stay on this little muscle here, but I think I'm going to have to remember it later. All right, so do anything else you need right here on both sides. And then put it on down. Don't worry, we'll do more. All right, so now we're going to go and we're going to do cat-cow. This is going to be on our hands and knees. So remove whatever you were sitting on. Notice first just how different it feels when you're down here. And then we're going to come onto our hands and knees. Knees under hips, shoulder width distance apart, hip width distance apart. Hands are forward here. And then you're going to exhale, fold. Inhale, up. Exhale, fold. You can make these as big or small as you need. So now we're moving that hip that we were just massaging, as well as the neck and the shoulders. If you want here, again, you're welcome to start bringing movement in. Listen to your body and do what it likes to move here. So maybe wiggle those hips a little bit. I always like to go back and forward here. Breathing as they're stretching here. And then come to stillness. So we're going to be doing our threading of the needle. So for that, you take one hand up, stretch, look up, and then exhale, hug, just a single hug, inhale up, exhale, hug through, and this time inhale up, and then next time we hug through, our hand's going to stay near the ground and we're actually threading it through underneath, so our arm is out, our bum is up, and our hand can be forward if that feels good. It can be behind your back in a little bit of a bind. You might be able to touch that leg. You want to be comfortable here. If it's too far, we've got our blocks. So you can actually rest your head on the block. Right? Start to use everything we've learned here. Breathing into it. Finding what works for you. And then to unwind, if your hand is up, place it back down. Push up. Inhale, lifting your arm back up to the sky and then place it down. Come back to balance for two breaths. And then other hand up. Exhale, hug through first. Inhale, up. Exhale, hug. And then the last time, inhale, up. And we're going to thread through the opposite direction. So exhale, come through. Shoulder goes down, arm goes out. And then you find where you want to put your other arm. Either out or behind. Breathing here. And again, find that pose that works for you. For three more breaths. Two. One. Slowly coming back up. Plant those hands down. Good. Now why don't we go back into a child's pose. Again, you have options here for your block to go in between your feet. So your bum rests on it. You can put your head on it. You can put your hands on it. Each one is a different stretch. Find your child's pose. You can stay here as long as you need. This is your practice. Ah, so next we're going to do our shoulders. You can do this laying down or on the wall. We have done the wall yoga as well. So take a ball, probably not the spiky one unless you really like that massage, 
If you're doing it on the ground, you're just gonna stick it under your shoulder blade, one, just one shoulder blade at a time. And you just kind of roll around. If you do it on the wall, it's the same thing. So you have your ball, put it on the wall, and then you just lean into it. And you can do this standing or seated. I actually really like the wall. So what you're doing is you're going around your shoulder blade. You can go into your spine too, um, not on the bone, but the erector spinae muscles right next to it. So roll around one side. We'll have time to do both because again, in yoga, we find balance by doing both sides. And just roll. I'm putting my hands in a little mudra here. You can have your arms up. Each way you put your arms, it will feel different. So please experiment with moving your shoulder blade as well as rolling it against you. Holy moly, this feels amazing. <laughs> no joke, you guys. This is a great choice. So again, thank you for being here with me. Thank you for doing this. <laughs> thank you for allowing me to do this. Mm. I have a feeling we're not going to go through all the poses that I put together because I really like just lingering, right? Uh, you can spend as long as you need. So I'm going to switch to the other side. But again, feel free to pause if you're watching this on replay and spend as much time as you want on each of these moves. So notice I've shifted my hips and I now have both of my knees this way. It just feels better for me to really push into the wall. For this one, I'm just like, like a cat on a scratching post, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. A little back scratcher on the tree with the bear, whatever you want to think of it as. Find those muscles that are just screaming out. Again, no pain, just happy to be releasing that stress because that's again our intention today. I got my arm in the chicken pose here. That's feeling good. Again, experiment with positioning of the arms and the shoulders, maybe scooching the ball over if you start to lean too far one way. Oh man, I just want to like, woo, up and down here. This is great, this is great. And we're gonna use our foam roller too, so don't, don't worry. Take a couple last movements on that side with your balls. Great job. And then we're going to use our strap, so. We've got our strap. We're gonna use our arms and floss. So I'm gonna stand up for this. So for flossing, again, do what works for you. Everyone has a different range. There we go. I take it between my hands a little wider than shoulders. And first I'm gonna inhale, raise my arms up and just practice sweeping up and down. You're gonna notice that you can adjust your grip like exactly like you're doing those moves <laughs> for my hero. And whatever works for you, so that your shoulders are not creaking, stretching, there's no pain. And notice I'm starting to go further and further back because my shoulders are pretty loose today. You might need to adjust your grip, that's fine. Give yourself enough so that you can start to go back and forth to whatever limit you have. If you're stuck here, maybe just hold it there and bounce a little bit if that's comfortable. But the idea is you're gonna go forward, up, back, and down, almost like jump rope. It's called flossing. Great, great, great way to work on your shoulder. Mobility and flexibility if it's available. And if it's not, maybe you just do one arm at a time, just do circles. This is your practice. Do what feels good to you. Or you can practice your magic scarf wrapping. <laughs> it's really whatever works for you here. All right, one more time. And then we're gonna hold our strap forward fold. And as we're folding down, you wanna step on the strap. So we're not doing jump rope, we're actually standing on it. And it's gonna give you some resistance. So when you fold down, you can wrap your hands around it, pull up and you can use your elbows and pull the elbows out and go even deeper. So in this fold, keep your knees bent. The more you bend your knees, the deeper it will be on your lower back, which is where a lot of us get that seating issue. So find your forward fold, let your head hang loose. <laughs> let your head hang loose. Let the neck go, shake it yes, shake it no. Maybe pedal those feet a little bit using this strap if it works. If you don't like the strap, let it go. Again, this is your practice. Wherever you are, you wanna find what works for you. <sighs> Breathing here. I like pedaling my legs here, that feels great. All right. 
And again, you can stay here as long as you need. The other thing you can do that we've done before is the block. If you are really flexible and you are going all the way down, maybe put the block on top of the strap. Make sure that you're not losing your balance here, but that'll lift you up so you can pull even deeper. <laughs> so again, now using everything in our arsenal here to make this your perfect practice. Now that we've done our forward fold, we're gonna do a little bit of a flow here. If you wanna go through your vinyasa, now is the chance. So for me, I'm gonna put my strap back on. I love this, it's super handy. No wonder why he has this awesome hero accessory, right? If you wanna use your blocks, we're doing lunges. So we're going down onto our hands and knees. Step up, right? You can use your hands on the block to make that a little bit deeper. Now you don't want your knee to go too far forward past your foot, so you can adjust the length here. And if this feels good, you can always tuck your toes and go into a low lunge with the knee up. Again, finding out if you need to use the blocks, one or two, or none, whatever works for you. And then we're gonna step forward. So finding your way into that forward fold, halfway lift, fold, inhale all the way up. And then we're gonna fold back down and we're gonna step back with that same foot that was forward first. So now we're in a lunge on the other side. And again, knee can be up or down, toes tucked or not aids or blocks or just standing up. Breathe in here. Adjusting your feet if necessary, both forward and width. Remember width, we did that as well. Breathing. And then you're gonna put your knee down, step back. Maybe we go knees, chest, chin, lift up into cobra, tuck your toes, down dog. This is our first down dog, if you haven't already done one. Again, this is your practice. So just breathe, maybe pedal your feet here, keeping in a little bend in your knees. Then find stillness. And then we're going to, again, press forward into a plank. I like to do a couple of these to build my strength. And again, if it doesn't work for you, put your knees down. And just practice, this is a good hip stretch too. But I like to go down dog to plank and you don't move your hands at all. It's all about your shoulders. Okay, now, walk those feet up, another forward fold. Good job. Then we're going to inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up. Exhale, folding down, stepping back with the other leg and just going back onto the ground. Welcome to do an up dog, down dog, and back down, but we're gonna meet on the ground. <laughs> and then we're gonna roll right on over. So now if you have your foam roller or paper towel roll, we're gonna start doing that. Looks like I've got my whole collection of goodies over here. Okay, so we're now gonna do our back massage. One of my most favorite things. <laughs> And again, there's lots of different kinds of rollers, but I love this trigger point. I don't get paid for it, but trigger point, these are amazing. <laughs> a little pricey, but totally worth it in my opinion, because there's so many different ways that they will add that pressure to help you release the muscles and the skin and the fascia in between. So, first off, we're gonna do the back. So you kind of scooch down. And then you lift up, so we're using our core here and just rolling that back. Now, if you have a paper towel roll, this may or may not be as cozy, but do what you can. Also, don't roll over your hood. That would be no bueno. Now, your hands again, remember we did the YMCA? Y-M-C, <laughs> right, A? Find where your arms wanna be, whatever pose that is. And you'll notice your scooch. If you need to scooch further, that's fine. Just roll back and forth, finding what release works for you. Lower back is gonna be different. You can always add a little bit of a figure four here if you want. We've done that before when we were Ida doing the foam roller, I believe. Ah. Oh yeah. And I like to do this. It's like a modified saddle. So I've just got my feet underneath. Do, again, whatever works for you. 
No pain. No pain. All right. Oh, I could do this again. <laughs> I could do all this forever. So please pause if this isn't live with you and find what works. And then I'm just gonna scooch up to sitting and just do my hips a little bit. Oh yeah. The other way that I like to do it is, we were doing it this way, rotate it and do it lengthwise. This is where a long one helps. Mine's a little short because I was poor when I got this. So I'm holding myself up more with my core, but I'm laying on it. You can just see it right there. So it's on my rectus spinae and I, if I rock back and forth, it really good, really good massage. Really good balance too. Remember you could lift one foot and then the other. Lots of fun stuff on our roller videos. Please check them out for more. And just find ooh, any area that needs a little extra love. Oh goodness. <laughs> I told you guys I needed this. All right. I wish I could linger here forever, but we'll have to keep going. Again, pause it if you want. Extricate yourself from the roller. We're gonna do our IT band on our legs. Now this one you should never do too much because it can cause damage, so be careful. But start with your hips and your glutes, and then you can start to roll a little bit on this, but again, be very gentle because your IT band is not made to stretch a lot, but it does hold a lot of tightness. You may need to cross your leg over. Oh, goodness. That's right on my socket. Whatever works for you. Remember, a little bit of tightness is fine, but you don't want pain, tingling, burning, electricity. And maybe you just stay still and, and the pressure's enough. Like right here, the pressure is enough. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm gonna spend a little bit longer on this one because they are very, very tight. If you don't have a foam roller and you have the balls, you can do the same thing, running your hand along the muscle or even laying on the ball. Oh yeah, that works very well. A little smaller, but it still works. So again, don't feel like if you don't have the fanciest equipment that costs a ton of money that you can't do this. Make it work for you with whatever you have in your house. Even like an old oatmeal <laughs> box, right? Or a giant can, if you pad it and duct tape it, I bet you that would be a pretty cool roller. Just a safety first, right? No sharp edges. Maybe you could make a living with yoga aid hacks, different ways to make stuff. We switch to our other side. Again, finding what works for you, starting at the top, work your way down. Oh goodness. <laughs> and again, no pain, just doing what works for you here. And again, maybe you're using that ball on the other side as well. Finding what works for you. Whoops. There we go. And it will be different. Notice I can go on my forearm here. Or again, maybe cross your leg over. Maybe do that figure four. Each side is different. Every person is different. So let's see what works for you. And I'm even gonna rotate a little bit onto my belly here just cause it's, cause it's the front. Ooh. <laughs> uh, you'll hear a lot of that grunting and groaning. It's good though, again, it's release. That's our theme for today. Okay, just a little bit more here. 
Remember, you can pause this and do as much as you need. And when you're ready, we're going to settle onto the ground. <clears throat> we're going to go into staff pose, which is like this. I'm just going to give the top of my legs a little bit of a roll here. Maybe even using my spiky ball. See how different it feels instead of laying on it, using a gentler pressure here. Just roll it around. Again, finding what works for you. And from here, ta-da, and these are a strap again, right? Forward fold, grab your hands, and you can put it on your feet. And this will help you keep your spine straight in this forward fold. Just use a strap. You're not calling for depth, you're going for a stretch. So the straighter you sit, you'll feel a different area of your spine stretch. So breathe into it. Maybe even you're tightening up. Or remember our blocks. If you're super flexible, put it behind your feet and either hold onto it with your fingers. Obviously, I'm not that flexible. Or maybe you can even use that. Right? Look at this C -c -c combo. <laughs> Find what works for you. There we go. Three more breaths. Good. And then unwind. We're going to go into cow's face. So we've really done a lot with our spine and our feet and our legs, everything so far. So cow's face, if you start cross-legged, you just cross one leg over. And then if it's available, you pull that foot back. So I have both of my feet here, and I'm sitting up nice and straight. If this isn't available, you can have one leg out, like this, just crisscrossed. Maybe here, you can use your straps, do different stretches with your upper body. Again, it's have fun, right? So we're stretching our legs just by staying here, you can always fold over as well. Find what you want in the cow's face on this side. We'll be here for about 30 seconds. Five more breaths. And back up. And we're gonna switch sides. So remember which one was on top? Flip them over. Straighten up. And again, notice if you wanna keep doing something with your arms here, or if you just wanna sit up straight, or if you wanna fold. Your practice, your pose. And again, we'll be here for about 30 seconds. more breaths. Two, and up. Now just untwist yourself, maybe doing a little bit of a windshield washer here, just to flip from side to side. And next we're going to be going onto our belly. Have your strap handy here. So we're gonna do boat. If you want, you can just lay like a crocodile or you could do your locust, a lot of different poses here. But if you have your strap and you can make a loop and put it around your ankles if that feels okay to you. For boat, um, and again, I feel like I'm getting a stretch just putting this thing on. It's like I've lassoed myself, right? But when you go and you have your ankles wrapped up like this, you can inhale, lift up, and that's giving you an assisted boat. 
The idea with boat is you hold it and it massages your guts. You can actually rock a little bit. It helps with digestion. It also gives a nice little stretch to your shoulders. So not only do you look like you're in a prison <laughs> of some sort, but it is a really good stretch. Actually, this feels fantastic. So whatever works for you, finding your boat. Or maybe you're holding your ankles, right? You can do that too. Just playing around with it. And then let that go and go under your belly. Maybe your cheek goes to one side. And then we're gonna go into a locust for real this time. So just putting your hands behind you, feet down. Do an inhale, pull everything up, looking down. It's kind of like a Superman pose with your hands back. Exhale down, cheek to the other side for a couple breaths. And then one more time, inhale up. Exhale down, good. We're gonna go into child's pose here. Again, if you wanna put a flow in, now is your chance. Find your child's pose with the aids of your choice. And just breathe here. And the last thing that we're going to be doing is a little bit of standing. So if you want to do another flow here, go right ahead. You'll have one more opportunity for a flow coming up. So we're going to go into standing. So we're in a nice mountain pose. Just feel your body, how it's touching the ground here. We're gonna do a couple of standing balances. So first, maybe you wanna have some blocks, maybe you want a strap, keep those nearby. Again, if it works for you, standing on a block will give you more challenge, right? You can do that. Just because it makes me too tall, I will not. <laughs> so we're going to First, just put our balance in one foot, just lifting it up. And then maybe you're going into your tree, but I'm going to do the big toe pose because we have our strap. So for that, you're pulling your knee up. Then you can either use the wrap or just put the stirrup on your foot. And the idea is standing on this leg with your knee slightly bent, start to extend that foot forward and hold that strap. Then maybe you transfer it to one side and you start to open up. Notice your balance here, but the strap should help you to be able to get into that stretch. Standing big toe pose. And then maybe pull it back for more challenge crossover. Twisted standing big toe. And again, it's okay to fall. Just do it safely. And then whenever you're ready, pull that knee back in, unbind yourself. Shake it out. And we're going to the other side. So first, just lift that foot. Again, maybe you're switching and standing on the block. Then you bind your foot, if you're with me. Or maybe you just do tree. I'm pulling my knee up, finding my balance, keeping a bend in that standing knee, and then kicking my foot out. From there, transferring so that I'm holding it with one hand and opening up. Focusing on my shoulders back. Standing knee bent, breathing. Standing big toe pose, but we're not holding the toe, we're using the strap. Back in again, challenge, try to cross over. We're twisted. And then come back to center, bend your knee, untwist, let it go. Whew, we did it. <laughs> All of that using our amazing accessory, right? So from here, if you want any other stretches with your legs, feel free. For me, we're gonna have to unfortunately start cooling down. So inhale, arms up. Exhale, we're going to a yogi squat. Knees wide, feet down. Maybe your heels can touch the ground, maybe not. Here's your block, right? Maybe you wanna sit on your block at whatever height works for you. But we're gonna hold this for about 20 seconds. Keep your spine straight, shoulders down. 
pressure of the elbows against your legs here. Option to plant one hand. Um, how do we do it? There should be a twist. I don't know if that actually works or not. Again, you're having fun with it, right? <laughs> All right, 10 more seconds. And then slowly come down. Now we're going to do our figure four. So if you like, and you have a foam roller, you can sit on the roller and do your figure four, which is one leg crossed over the other and you're pressing down on it. You can do that sitting, you can do that on your back, or if you're with me, we're gonna do pigeon. So you have all of these options. Okay, so for pigeon, you can start on your hands and knees or your down dog. You're gonna step one foot through, the knee comes to the elbow on the same side and you start to cross your foot over and lower and shimmy that back leg down. So for some of you, you will want a uh, block underneath your hips. That's fine. Or maybe you want it up front. The idea is your hips are straight you're not putting too much pressure anywhere. And then you fold over. Maybe again, putting your head on a block or your hands on a block. So find your pigeon or your figure four here. And for me, you know, I like to always do a little bit of a, a bind. slowly come back out of it. Holding here, if you're with me in pigeon, and then you've got the option with the strap. If it's not too much on your knee, you can wrap it around your foot. Check that. Okay? Ideally, you should be sitting up straight and grab your foot, but this helps. And then we'll kind of fall out of it or go back to your down dog, whatever works. If you're sitting down, switch to the other side. You're with me, foot up, knee comes forward, crossing the ankle over, into pigeon on the other side again. Hip should be up, use that block if you need it underneath right there, so you're not dumping into one side. And then straighten up, walk down, and find your figure four or pigeon on the other side with whatever modifications work for you. Breathing into it. And when you're ready, you can come out. Again, first, if you're in pigeon, just settling back normal and maybe finding that bind with the strap or without on the other side. with it okay and wherever we are let's all come back maybe doing one more flow here so if you want this is your last option for kicking back mm. just pedal it out lower down and then we'll meet back on our backs Take any other last movement you need. We're gonna do a twist with our straps and then it is Savasana time already, my friends. So here we go. If you're with me, just pull your knees in. And then let one leg down, roll your ankle here. And then use your hands or your strap. Don't know why I put it back on. <laughs> 
and you can guide your foot across or you can keep your knee bent. If you want here, you can rest your knee on the block, right? If you have your knee bent, maybe you're just doing that. Again, find what works for you. So for me, this is similar to what we did our standing foot. Just laying down. And then to the other side. Pull that knee in, let it go, give it a hug. Switch sides. Roll your ankle around and find the twist that you want on the other side. So there we go. Breathe into it. Very nice. Again, sting as long as you need any twists. And then unbind yourself and find anything else that you need here. Again, feel free to pause it and do any other movements you'd like. If you have a block, let's do a quick bridge. Put the block in between your legs if that's comfortable for you or else you can stick it underneath your back. Inhale, lift up, right, with your abs. Holding it here for five, four, three, two, and release. Noticing how different it feels. I'm gonna do one more. Inhale up, holding it there. For five, four, three, two, and down. And again, now we're gonna find our savasana. So any last movements you need. Maybe you wanna rest with your feet on blocks either at the end or put your legs up. Again, having your legs up or even on a foam roller, why not? Instead of blocks, why not use the roller? Look at this. Oh yeah. So dangling feet again allows you to feel nice and secure because you're not gonna run away from this. Wherever you are in your savasana, your legs should be wide, arms down, palms up to get, gather energy. Palms down if you'd like to ground. Take some deep breaths, settle in, maybe adjusting your flesh or your costume, any parts of you that you need. And you're gonna start to close your eyes and settle in to your savasana. So we've had a pretty relaxing designs for Zen here. Now we're gonna absorb the benefits of that. With your eyes closed, start to notice your breath again. Now that we're cooling down, you do not want to do any more ujjayi breath, but just notice, start to settle your breath. Notice the feel of your body, how sore or tight or loose or comfortable and tired your muscles are. I'm gonna take you through a body scan since we did spend a lot of our time here working on that. So we're gonna tighten the muscles and release them and then we're gonna go into our full Savasana relaxation. So again, first we're gonna focus on our feet. Maybe wiggle those toes one more time. You know, roll those ankles one more time. And then scrunch those toes nice and tight and let it go. And then go into your calves and lower legs and maybe just tighten up a little and then let it go. Then tightening up your kneecap and your upper legs, pull everything else and your lower legs tight, 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 and let it go. With a breath, start to tighten your feet, your lower legs, knees, upper legs, and hips, and your glutes, pull them all really tight and let it go. Next, you're gonna focus on your abs. So you're rolling everything up, tightening feet, lower legs, upper legs, abs, really tight, and let it go. Now your fingertips, right? So we're 
tightening everything with our lower legs, our abs, and just scrunch those hands really tight and let it all go. One more time from your feet, lower legs, upper legs, tightening your glutes, tightening your belly, tightening your fingers, wrists, and arms, pressing into the ground. Go, 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 and let it go. And last, we're gonna push our shoulders and neck as well. So starting with our feet, tightening up our feet, our toes, lower legs, knees, upper legs, hips, glutes, fingertips, arms, back, shoulders, and neck. Press everything, even scratch your little nose. Ooh and let it go. Shake anything out, move anything out. Your body should now be fully relaxed. Notice how just engaging all those muscles one more time. You may have changed your body and start to invite a slow, calm breath. I'm gonna allow you to settle into this for three minutes. Make sure you've got that good music playing. Maybe even pulling a blankie on top if you're cooling down. And I will call you back out of it in three minutes. Enjoy your savasana. And you can stay here as long as you need. If you're with me, we're going to start to deepen our breath. Just noticing the feel of our body pressing against the floor, the air against our body. Start to invite gentle movement into those fingers and toes again, maybe rolling your wrists and ankles. When you're ready, maybe going into a full body stretch. Mm. Hopefully feeling much better after that big long massage we just had together. And when you're ready, roll over to one side and stay there for a moment. The in-between. Thank yourself for being here and for finding whatever you needed. Hopefully tying to your intention, relaxation or whatever dedication you had. Thank yourself for going through this and know that whatever comes next, you can always come back here. And when you're ready, roll up onto your seat. And whatever comfy seat you want does not have to be on an aid. Keep your eyes closed. You can invite a gentle gaze. With your shoulders back and down, we're gonna inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands to heart center. 
thinking again about your intention and whether you'd like to keep it going forward or if there's something else that you would like to take with you for the remainder of your day. We're gonna seal our practice and set your next intention with two big breaths. First inhale, exhale. And your biggest one yet, inhale and let it all go. The light, the love, the teacher in me. Thanks, the light, the love, the teacher in all of you. Thank you for joining me for another Designs for Zen. And namaste. Thank you all for being here. It's great to see you. Again, we'll be doing this at the end of every month, so stay tuned for more. And again, if you missed any of our videos on any of the aids, from ball, foam rollers, blocks, straps, pillows, weighted blankets. I've got it all on YouTube at Riffling Designs. Please watch me there. Subscribe, follow, give me some likes, donations available as well. All of this I do out of the kindness of my heart and it's so great to see you all here. So until next month, take care everybody.